Hi, I am Sandra, and I am 30 years old. I decided to write about an event that took place recently, which I believe has brought a sense of closure for me over such a difficult time in my life after everything had happened with my husband and his family. That was months ago, and the dust of this chapter has settled by now. I am also still coming to terms with the emotional aftermath, and I feel that sharing my journey may only enable me in spirit. Let's take a step back to three years ago when I made a major life choice, marrying my boyfriend, Tyler. We had met through mutual friends and enjoyed three wonderful years together before tying the knot. Tyler was always the life of the party, fun, attentive, and loving. He came from a well-to-do family and had a lucrative job, which allowed him to shower me with affection and gifts. Our bond was strengthened by our mutual love for travel. As our relationship evolved from casual dating to something more serious, my friends consistently praised him and delighted for us. Tyler's generosity was overwhelming at times. For instance, he gifted me a new laptop when I graduated from college. Despite his kindness, I often felt uneasy about the imbalance in our financial contributions. Tyler, I'm just a college student, I'd say. I can't match your spending. Let me try to split the other costs, at least. Tyler would brush off my concerns, insisting on treating me and arguing that it was common among his friends to pamper their partners. As I gradually accepted his gestures, I also sought ways to contribute within my means. Once I landed a well-paying job post-college, I was eager to reciprocate his generosity. We started sharing expenses more equally and even discussed moving in together. You can move in with me, Tyler proposed one day. I inherited my house from my grandpa, so no worries about rent, but we should split other expenses to keep things fair. Despite my reservations, Tyler reassured me of his intentions to take care of me and so began a new chapter in our lives together. Despite our agreement to fairly share the financial responsibilities considering our differing incomes, things were running smoothly until I had the opportunity to meet Tyler's family, who lived quite far from us. With Tyler tied up with work commitments, he couldn't accompany them, so I was left to host his parents and sister by myself. Before their arrival, Tyler had given me a heads-up about their judgmental tendencies, but didn't go into details. He simply suggested that I should play along and ignore any potentially hurtful comments. With this in mind, I decided to approach the meeting with optimism. However, any hint of positivity vanished as soon as Tyler's family arrived. Instead of the warm welcome I had hoped for, Tyler's parents and sister showed up visibly annoyed. This stark contrast to my expectations set a tense atmosphere right from the start. As we gathered and conversation ensued, it became clear that they harbored negative opinions about me. So, you're the woman Tyler has been seeing? I didn't expect to find you in this house? Do you even pay rent? Martha, Tyler's mother, asked with a tone of disapproval. No, Martha, I don't pay rent. Tyler mentioned that the house is fully paid for, but we split all other bills evenly, I explained, hoping to clear up any misunderstandings. Martha quickly dismissed my explanation, retorting, Just because the house is paid for doesn't mean you can mooch off him. This is his house, not yours. Remember that for the rest of your life. The conversation became increasingly uncomfortable, especially with his sister Teresa, who seemed more interested in glaring at me than engaging in dialogue. When I tried to include her by asking about her life, she responded with irritation, mentioning her marriage to a wealthy billionaire back home. Despite my efforts to bridge the gap, she simply brushed me off. Throughout their visit, Tyler offered no support and seemed to align himself with his family's sentiments. Gabriel and Martha continued to criticize me, making the entire experience quite challenging. 
Tyler's family expressed disapproval over my spending habits, particularly my purchases of makeup and skincare products. They felt that indulging in such luxuries was inappropriate, given what they perceived as my insufficient contributions to the household. Their skepticism about my financial dependence on Tyler grew, partly fueled by Tyler's remarks. For example, he would offhandedly comment, You know, Sandra was a struggling student when we first met, implying that I had relied heavily on him financially, even though this was not entirely accurate. Tyler would recount how he had covered all expenses early in our relationship because my job at the time didn't support what he called my taste for luxury. I was taken aback by these comments and reminded him that we had since adjusted our arrangement to split our bills equally. I explained that I had lived simply both before and during our relationship and that any luxury items I had were gifts from him gifts I had often cautioned him against due to their extravagance. Yet Tyler justified his lavish spending by claiming his social status required him to present extravagant gifts, revealing that his generosity was more about showing off to his friends than genuine care. Their visit left me with a sour taste, prompting me to confront Tyler about the entire ordeal after they left. Unfortunately, he shrugged it off, suggesting I was overthinking things. Don't take it to heart, Sandra. They meant well. What they said was not meant to be taken so seriously. Relax, you're overreacting. He dismissed my concerns. Despite my reservations, five months later, Tyler proposed, and in a moment of happiness, I accepted. We planned an engagement party and decided to split the expenses evenly. Meanwhile, I was running a small business on the side, which Tyler knew was growing, but he never really inquired about its earnings. To me, it was more of a fulfilling hobby than a significant moneymaker. When it came time to organize our engagement party, I decided it was an occasion to treat myself a bit. Tyler supported this idea, and we managed the expenses together, ensuring an equal contribution from both sides. I even took on the expense of covering plane tickets for my extended family to attend our engagement party. However, as the celebrations unfolded, the earlier criticisms resurfaced. You shouldn't have splurged so much on this party, Sandra. You're draining Tyler's account before you're even married. At this rate, you'll end up with a backyard wedding. I thought you were financially irresponsible, but it's worse than I thought they criticized. I stood my ground and firmly responded to Martha. The party was extravagant, but we both agreed to it. I paid my share, and it was actually your son's idea to include everyone. Tyler had insisted a lot, and I couldn't say no. He mentioned he didn't mind the expense, but the criticism continued, with Martha accusing me of manipulating Tyler into spending more than he should. Teresa chimed in, too, asserting that she knew what kind of person I was and that I should have been more considerate. Frustrated and needing a break from the tension, I excused myself and sought a moment of peace on the venue's lawn. There, I overheard Teresa and her husband Justin laughing about the situation at my expense. It felt as though my engagement party was falling apart, with Tyler seemingly oblivious to his family's harsh judgments. Most of his extended family assumed I was jobless, painting me as a dependent fiancé. Noticing my distress, my mom, always perceptive and protective, approached me. Aware of the challenges of managing finances as a single parent, she urged me to reconsider the engagement, pointing out the ongoing mean comments from Tyler's family. After the party, I confronted Tyler about the situation. He brushed it off as a joke, expressing his love and stating that financial matters didn't concern him. However, I reiterated my desire to contribute more significantly, especially towards expenses like rent, but he dismissed the suggestion. As we moved forward with wedding planning, the stress intensified. Tyler's parents continued to criticize my choices, 
accusing me of bankrupting their son. The constant scrutiny and accusations made the engagement period increasingly challenging. I made it clear that everyone, including my mom, was pitching in for the wedding expenses. However, Martha sharply accused me of taking advantage of her son and suggested that we were on a mission to deplete his bank account. Amid these accusations, my in-laws unfairly branded me a gold digger. I addressed Gabriel calmly to alleviate his concerns. Gabriel, I'm not asking for any financial help. I just want to ensure you understand that we are completely capable of financing the wedding ourselves. Despite my explanations, Teresa didn't hold back her critiques about the cost of my dress and makeup on the wedding day, even though I had previously clarified that those expenses were covered by my mother. The ceremony itself unfolded without a hitch, but at the reception, Martha and Gabriel did not miss any opportunity to criticize my spending habits accusing me of financially exploiting their son. Despite their harsh words, I chose to remain silent to avoid any conflict that might ruin our special day. A few months later, Tyler celebrated a significant promotion at work, and he was eager to mark the occasion with a grand family dinner. I was excited for him and decided to make the event even more special by covering all the expenses myself. Tyler... I want this dinner to be something extraordinary. I'm so proud of you, and I want to celebrate your success, I told him enthusiastically. Tyler appreciated my gesture, and I shared with him that my business was flourishing. I had a stable income from my job, and I had recently accessed a trust fund from my paternal grandfather. I meticulously planned the whole event to ensure everything was perfect for the celebration. However, when his family arrived, they were visibly unhappy with the arrangements. Despite receiving positive feedback from other guests, it soon became apparent that they had reservations about the foolishness of the celebration. During the speeches, Martha took the opportunity to stand up. Her voice carried across the room as she began, I want to thank everyone for gathering here to celebrate my son. He's incredibly hardworking and generous, and truly deserving of this promotion. Unfortunately, it seems his good fortune did not extend to his choice of a partner. It's unfortunate that of all people, he found himself tied to what some might call a gold digger. I only wish he had seen the true nature of his wife earlier, then he wouldn't have to work so hard to support her lavish lifestyle. She continued, her tone tinged with regret. It's now painfully obvious to everyone here that his wife has been quite extravagant. From the engagement party to tonight's dinner, it seems she has nearly drained his accounts. Feeling the sting of her words, I took a deep breath and steeled myself. Martha added, Thank goodness we had Sandra sign a prenuptial agreement before the wedding. At least some of his assets are protected. She sighed seemingly relieved, expressing that it was a good thing her son had married someone who could at least maintain the image of a trophy wife. Tyler chimed in, agreeing with his mother. I can't even afford to spend money on myself anymore. There's nothing left, he lamented, comparing my behavior unfavorably to what he imagined another's response might be in a similar situation. In shock and frustration at the unfolding scene, I finally spoke up. Do you really think I'm a gold digger? Tyler's response was cutting. Your lifestyle is quite damaging to my bank account. Feeling hurt, yet determined to clarify the misconceptions, I decided to confront the accusation directly. Since I'm such a gold digger to you all, let me just show you my bank balance. Perhaps that will clear things up, I declared revealing my financial independence to everyone present. The room fell into disbelief amidst the heated accusations. Martha pointedly accused, Did you steal my son's money? To which Tyler added suspiciously, She must have taken it from you. Frustrated yet calm, I responded, I don't need to steal money from your son. This is all from my efforts. Besides, 
I recently accessed a trust fund left by my grandfather. I had plans to use it to buy a bigger house and surprise Tyler, but given the current circumstances, that seems unlikely now. Despite my attempt to clarify the situation, Tyler, seemingly ignoring the tension, suggested, We can still buy the house. It'll be a wonderful gift. However, I was firm in my resolve, expressing my refusal to accept such a gift under the current conditions. This is not happening. Your family has insulted me for too long, and you've never once stood up for me. Instead, you've let these misconceptions about how I'm supposedly using your money spread. I asserted, my frustration evident. Tyler tried to downplay the situation, claiming I was overreacting, but I stood my ground. No, I am not overreacting. Everyone here knows what your family has been calling me. They were here when you allowed them to insult me during our engagement party. Feeling the cumulative burden of disrespect and humiliation over the years, I reached a breaking point. I could no longer tolerate the toxic environment and sternly told Tyler, I want a divorce. As he attempted to plead and explain, my mom intervened, advising him to remain silent. You never defended my daughter all these years. It's time she ends this toxic relationship for good, she declared firmly. We left the party, leaving behind a crowd of shocked attendees whispering among themselves. Despite the dramatic revelation in front of Tyler's extended family, friends, and colleagues, I no longer cared. I was resolute in my decision to leave him and move on from the relationship. My mom's support was unwavering as we exited, marking the end of a painful chapter in my life. After the tumultuous confrontation, I went straight to our shared home, gathered my belongings, and while Tyler persistently tried to reach me, I muted my phone and went to stay with my mother for solace. The next day, I reached out to my cousin, who was a lawyer, to begin drafting the divorce papers. With a prenuptial agreement already in place, the process promised to be straightforward, sparing me the need to share any of my now substantial financial assets with Tyler. However, the situation escalated when Tyler and his family appeared at my mother's doorstep, demanding a conversation. My mother stood firm, instructing them to leave. Meanwhile, Tyler continued his attempts to contact me, his messages oscillating between tearful apologies and unsettling threats. I saved all these communications, preparing to file for a restraining order if necessary. Amid this emotional chaos, my mother's unwavering support gave me strength. Tyler even attempted to confront me at my office, but having informed security in advance, they promptly escorted him out. It was then I decided to leave my well-paying job. My thriving business meant I no longer needed the position, and my aspirations were no longer about accumulating wealth but seeking a peaceful, dignified life. Thus, I handed in my resignation that very day and began to move forward. Only a week after, I had the divorce papers served to Tyler at his workplace. He appeared at my old office, only to find that I had already resigned. My former colleagues reported his continued attempts to send flowers and gifts to my mother's house, which we consistently returned. The ongoing harassment led me to consider relocating. With my mother's encouragement, I found an ideal house in the next state, providing a sanctuary away from my ex. Currently, as I await the finalization of the divorce paperwork, the judge has already facilitated a smooth proceeding thanks to the solid prenuptial agreement. During the five months of our separation, I took the time to collect myself and prepare for a new chapter in my life, free from turmoil and filled with renewed hope. I quickly settled into my new home, taking the significant step of changing my number to avoid the incessant barrage of messages from Tyler and his family.
I heard through the grapevine that Tyler's life was unraveling. He blamed his parents for the downfall of our marriage, and professionally, he faced a significant setback. His colleagues began to distance themselves, and his seniors were displeased with the negative publicity in their close-knit community. His parents didn't help matters, spreading infidelity rumors, but thankfully, these baseless accusations failed to gain any traction. In contrast to Tyler's downward spiral, my life began to flourish. I focused on growing my business and relishing my newfound freedom. I started going out more and even dipped my toes back into the dating scene. Tyler's past insecurities made me wary of committing too quickly, but I remained hopeful that in time, I would heal and find someone who truly values and cherishes me. While Tyler's actions caused me considerable pain, the strength I gained from overcoming those challenges has propelled me into a brighter future, full of possibilities and self-discovery. I look forward to what lies ahead, confident in my resilience, and more aware of what I seek in relationships and life.